What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and today I'm going to show you how to create a grunge effect like this using your own textures. Dread Labs. All right, guys, so before we start off the video, could you please leave a like, a comment, and a subscribe if you haven't already, because it really helps this channel out. Uh, I'm still growing a lot, and basically your support helps me out growing this channel, and this gives you a tutorial every week. Also, if you wanna get the project file for any of my tutorials, you can become a patron of mine. This supports your channel immensely, and it also gives you access to a lot of different project files. All right, everyone, so I just put out a new pack, and uh, basically this is just a texture pack that a lot of you can make yourself if you find the time. Um, the only thing you basically need is a camera. You don't even need a high quality camera. I have one, but if you want to do this on your phone camera, it should also be working uh, just fine. Uh, basically, I'm going to show you a couple of things you can make from just a picture of like a rough crunchy texture. Okay, uh, let's just make a new document and I'm gonna make my document four and a half thousand by 3000 pixels. And this is just because of that's uh, the scale I have put my photos to. So if the resolution of your on your phone is, for example, smaller, uh, you can just go with a smaller resolution for this document. It doesn't really matter. So let's drop in one of the textures uh, that I just uh, took. If you want to get the textures for these yourself, uh, you can actually get them on dreadlabs.net. The next thing we want to do is basically uh, drop in a, a little bit of text. Uh, what I'm going to do is just grab the text that I did earlier. Uh, just to save some time. All right, so as you can see, I just dropped in a little bit of text. Uh, it's nothing too special. It's just a group with uh, two blocks of text and a color overlay. Uh, for this one, I think I want to make it a little bit darker, maybe like a dark uh, gray. So the first thing I want to do is make this into a smart object. Uh, that way we can apply different filters to our text, uh, get this thing distorted and grungy. The next step is basically making a displacement map based on our texture here. So what we want to do is click on our texture layer here, right click, and then click on duplicate layer at the top here. And we're going to move this into a new document and we'll call this displacement map. Uh, the first thing we want to do is remove all of the color from this, uh, which we can do by pressing Control or Command U on your keyboard. Uh, this brings up the U and saturation menu. And you can basically just erase all of the saturation, which makes this image black and white. All right, so the next thing we want to do is increase the contrast a little bit. Uh, and we can do that by pressing Ctrl or Command M on our keyboard, which brings up the Curves menu. So if you don't really know how the Curves menu works, uh, if you drag in the left slider, the image will get darker. And if you drag in the right slider, the image will get lighter. So we're looking for uh, something like this. If you have a very gray looking texture, for example, if your texture looks a little bit like uh, this, uh, for example, when you f uh, take a hazy picture, all you need to do is just drag in these sliders uh, so that the contrast will increase. Um, you know, make sure that you have a lot of black and white values in your image. Uh, so something like this would just do fine. All right, so the last step of this is basically blurring this out because if we zoom in a lot, as you can see there are a lot of different pixels and each of these pixels will change something in our text uh, later. Uh, we want to make that a little bit less detailed. So if we go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, uh, a filter radius of two or three pixels usually does fine. Uh, I'm not going to go with two. Uh, so looking at the difference here, uh, as you can see only the like speckles here are a little bit washed out now. All right, so now we save this up as a PSD file. That's very important. All right, so now that our displacement map is saved up, let's go back to our original file here, which is this one. And basically what we can do now is uh, change the text based on the light and dark values of our displacement map. And since our displacement map is basically the same image as this one, let's just see what happens if we go to filter, distort, displace. Uh, you can leave the values around 10. Uh, we can change them later because we're using smart objects. But if we click OK and load in the displacement map, as you can see, the edges of our text are now uh, modified based on the light and dark values of our image. Uh, if we lower the opacity, you might be able to see it a little bit. As you can see, the uh, edge is going down where it's darker, as you can see with this speckle here specifically. And it's going up once it's lighter again. So if I drop in our displacement map uh, over the image, uh, you can even see better what's going on here because the contrast is a little bit higher here. With a little bit of lowered opacity, and let me just remove the background here. Actually, let's move the displacement map underneath the text here. So now you can kind of see what's going on here. Um, you know, based on the light and dark values, the edges are basically turning. Uh, here you also can see it really well with this dark speckle. It's basically making a dent in the text. 
So, uh, you know, this way we can basically make our text look a little bit more grungier and have the edges a little bit more uh, natural instead of like perfectly uh, straight. So let's go back and put our opacity to 100%. So another thing we can do is have the texture blend in with our text here. So if we double click on our text layer here, this will bring up the uh, blending menu. And basically, if we slide in these two options here, you can see that the lighter parts of our uh, texture are starting to bleed through a little bit. Uh, so as you can see, definitely around the lighter parts here, uh, you can get some grunginess going on. Depending on your texture, this really uh, requires some playing around with. As you can see, this really destroys our uh, words here. Um, but there is, however, another way we can use a grunge uh, texture over this. So let's just leave this for now and leave it at this. Again, we want to make another duplicate of our texture here. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is again remove the color, which we can do by pressing Ctrl or Command U on the keyboard and remove the saturation. And now what we're going to do is increase the contrast really harshly by pressing Command or Control M on our keyboard. And now we're going to really uh, tighten the sliders. And even uh, better, we are going to play around with the uh, points here. So basically what we're looking for is getting a lot of different details from our texture, uh, but with a really hard contrast, so almost black and white. So the way we can do that is clicking here in the middle. And then for example, what we can do is lower this point down. This makes the lightest points of our image darker. As you can see, this requires a little bit of playing around with, but the more we slide these parts in, basically the more uh, different kinds of details we're gonna get especially like this. As you can see, we have a lot of detail that we didn't really see before now, and that's what we're looking for. So something like this should be fine. What I'm gonna do now is right click on my layer and click on rasterize layer. Now we're gonna go to the, uh, the top bar and click on edit, define brush preset. And then we can just, you know, name this whatever you want. We may call this sample brush one. And then immediately you'll go to your brush menu, which basically makes you be able to use this texture as a brush. So let's uh, make this texture invisible for a second. And we'll make a new layer and we'll start painting with a different color so we can really see what we're doing. Let's just do this with blue. And as you can see, this is basically now a uh, texture brush. What's really nice is we can use this as a mask. So let's just make a mask on our text layer here. You know, make sure that your foreground color is black and your mask is selected here on the right. And now if we click, you can really see that we, uh, you know, really destroyed uh, a lot of the parts of our text here. If you think it's too much, you can basically press X on your keyboard, which changes the color, foreground color to white. And this will basically restore a lot. But if you place your brush somewhere else, as you can see, you're basically switching your uh, brush around a little bit. And this is a little bit easier to see if we go in our uh, mask view here, which we can access to uh, by pressing uh, on the mask here while holding Alt on our keyboard or Option if you're on a Mac. So this is basically what our mask looks like. And again, let's put our foreground color to black. And if we paint in here, you can see it's getting really, really black. Uh, and you know, maybe a little bit too invisible, but if we change the foreground color to white again, and we'll click here and there. Let's just keep on changing these around. And as you can see, you really get some nice grungy textures going on here right now. So while holding Alt, we'll click on the mask again to go back into our normal view. And as you can see, this really helps, uh, you know, uh, grunging your text a little bit. And also you get a lot of different custom uh, grunge effects for this, you know, because no one's gonna do this the exact same way that you are doing it. So that's really nice. All right, so to finish this artwork up, uh, I'm gonna apply a little bit of effects, uh, you know, just to see if we can make it look a little bit nicer, uh, just to experiment a little bit with. Uh, this is all completely optional, of course, and the main takeaway from this video were uh, what you can do with these textures. But what I'm gonna do now is go to adjustments and make a gradient map. And because we had our foreground color to blue, uh, we had this, but what we can do is let's make the both ends of the gradient dark or black. Uh, this basically makes sure that um, all the lightest parts and the darkest parts of our uh, image will be black. So for the color, let's go with maybe a yellow color. Uh, yeah, I guess you could say it's a, it's a very industrial looking uh, background. Let's just experiment a little bit more with the color. 
All right, so what I did was basically put a very dark greenish color in the middle, which gives us a nice little fade in between the yellow and the black here. As far as the text goes, uh, I think I want to make the text a little bit lighter now. So let's go back into our smart object and change the color overlay to something a little bit more light. Maybe like this beige white-ish color. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, it looks a little bit better in my opinion. Uh, it's still the effect is a little bit harsh. So if you feel like it's a little bit too harsh, you can always try uh, inverting your mask here. Um, so let's select our mask here and press Ctrl or Command I on our keyboard. See if that looks a little bit better. Uh, yeah, it kind of does, I guess. Um, so if you want to learn all about how I manipulate these masks and if you've never really done it before and you want to get better at it, there's actually a video on my channel which basically teaches you all about manipulating layer masks in Photoshop. The link for that will be in the description. What I'm actually going to do is remove the link here. So now if I transform my mask, I won't affect the text. And I'll press Command T to scale up our mask here a little bit. Uh, maybe rotate it a little bit so that uh, the texture is a little bit everywhere. And now what I want to do is increase the contrast of our mask a little bit, which you're going to do with, you probably guessed it already because we used it a lot in this video, the curves adjustment by pressing Ctrl or Command M on our keyboard. And let's drag these guys in a little bit. Oh, I'm actually doing it on the uh, on the uh, layer itself, so I need to do this on the mask. And the more we drag this white slider in, the more it gets a little bit visible, I guess. So that's uh, what we're looking for. Uh, if we want to soften up these edges, we can always go for a subtle box blur by going to filter, blur, box blur. And let's just push a radius of one that should do the trick. All right. Um, what I also try to do is, since this is a masked layer, uh, basically that means that everywhere where you cannot see the text, it's basically gone. Uh, what we can do is add a layer style with a drop shadow. And let's just reset this to default. And, you know, we'll put the blend mode to normal. We're gonna make a really hard edge around this. We will keep the distance at zero. We'll turn the spread up to 100% and we'll up the size a little bit. And this basically creates a stroke, I know. Uh, but now if we lower the uh, spread a little bit, maybe put the blend mode to dissolve to get it a little bit more harsh. And then up the size a little bit. Maybe just keep it to normal and then like make the spread just a little bit higher. This basically makes it so that we have a stroke around the text, you know, so um, yeah, this gives your text a little bit more legibility. Of course, it's a little bit hard to read anyway because we're using a very like grungy style. But yeah, if you need some readability, uh, it really works to do a drop shadow around this. Let me just show you in the example that we made uh, beforehand. So looking at this one, if we turn off the drop shadow, you can really see that the uh, green parts are really like in front of the text here. And if we turn on the drop shadow, you can actually see that there's uh, some outlines around that. So yeah, that really helps in this case, I think. Then finally, we want to add some texture to this thing as a whole because I'm not a really big fan of like these super dark blacks here. Um, so what I want to do is add some paper texture to make it look like it's, this has been printed and photocopied a, uh, a couple of times. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to grab a paper texture from the Dreadlabs Paper Pack Volume 2. Uh, basically, this, one, uh, this pack contains a lot of different paper textures. And what I'm going to use is a vintage paper from a vintage book that I scanned in. All right, let's drop this guy in. We'll rotate it so that it fits the landscape mode and this should do the trick. Uh, by the way, we can delete this uh, masked version here or this brush version. We don't really need it at this point. Um, so with the vintage paper, uh, I'm gonna change the blend mode to screen. And of course, this is way, way too light. So what I'm gonna do is manipulate the texture itself by pressing Command or Control M on our keyboard. And we're gonna just make this a little bit darker. And what I'm going to do is also making the lightest values a little bit darker. Just like that. All right, so that's basically it. So before we end the video, I just want to give a huge shout out to my patrons. So thanks to my patrons for actually able to keep this channel up and running and give you guys new tutorials every week, as well as some cool asset packs and a lot of different guides. So if you don't know, if you become a patron of mine, you'll get access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials, including this one. A 15% discount in my asset web store where you can get the paper textures and the grunge textures that I used in this video, as well as an exclusive Discord role. If you go one tier up, you'll also get access to a couple of exclusive videos and even more project files. So if you want to become a patron, there's a link in the description. And we'll all that being said, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.